Good morning and welcome to Unity of Star. We welcome all of you, whether you're in the sanctuary, on the Zoom, or on YouTube. I'm Lawrence Toller, member of the Board of Trustees of Unity of Star, and uh, pleased to be able to assist with today's services. Now, I have the great pleasure of introducing uh, a doctor of metaphysics <laughs> and ordained minister in the field of new thought, a trained actor and singer. Uh, she has also started and run a drama school for young people and she is just filled with all sorts of creative impulses. And what I know about her is that by virtue of her understanding of unity and oneness, she is a creative being. She expresses her creativity wherever she can. Sometimes she'll make you laugh, and sometimes you'll just have to cry because she's going to put it out there from <laughs> her heart. So why don't we give her a heartful welcome to our pulpit this morning, Dr. Adrian Calabrese. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, from the heart. From the heart, for sure. Thank you. Oh, wait. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're all here. Thank God. Today's uh, topic is finding peace in a career. World. Because don't you think the world is crazy? You know, uh, you, you remember that tune, John Lennon, uh, your folk, oh no, um, give peace a chance. Remember that one? All oh, we want to say, give peace a chance, right? Well, you know, they wrote that way back when the world was crazy then. <laughs> the world was crazy then, the world is crazy now. It's just a different kind of crazy. We're used to some kinds of crazy and some other kinds of crazy really devastate us. And sometimes it's very hard to find our personal peace in this kind of a world, in this kind of an environment. It's hard for all of us. How do we do that in such a crazy world? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you how. So uh, hang in there with me and I'll get there. You know, the world is oppressive. It comes upon us. You know, we do believe that you can attract individually into your life those things um, that match the energy that you put out into the world. But the world itself is collectively oppressive. And if that is so, you got to think about what kind of energy is dominant that is going out into the world. So there have to be enough of us out there putting the good stuff, the good energy out there to counter that oppression. And the only way we can do that is to be at peace. We don't fight back. We don't hit back. Spiritually, we pull in. We become calm. We wait. And that is a tough thing to do. You know, you remember St. Francis of Assisi. You know, I grew up Catholic. And um, uh, you know that prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. I'm sure you've heard that, even if you aren't uh, Catholic or haven't grown up in the Catholic Church. Make me an instrument of thy peace. Wow, what does that mean? Well, uh, many of you know Dr. Wayne Dodd. He passed away, but he had a lot of wisdom there going on in all of his books. He was one of the first metaphysicians to really get out there and talk to us. And he had a very close connection to St. Francis of Assisi. And um, he felt that he had spent a lifetime with St. Francis of Assisi. He even went to Assisi and felt the, the vibration 
we were really connected. And he gives us some kind of an explanation for um, what that line might mean. And um, I'll tell you what he said. I'll read a, a verbatim what Wayne Dyer said, so I don't mess it up. He said, peace is the result of retraining your mind to process life as it is, rather than as you think it should be. Isn't that a good one? I know. And when I read that uh, years ago, it really impressed me. It's like, wow, that is what essentially the nuts and bolts of peace may be on, on a metaphysical level. He also says, it is always about how you choose to process events, not the events themselves that determine your level of peace. Ain't that the truth? It is. It is the way we see it. It is your perception of what has happened to you. Every one of us in here has had dark nights of the soul. Things have been difficult for everyone at some point or another. If you have passed that, then you, if, if, if that hasn't happened to you yet, then you haven't lived long enough. Let's get ready. It's going to happen. <laughs> That's the bad news. And hopefully it won't be so bad. But some of us are pretty challenged, you know, and I always talk from my own perspective and from my own life. I always share with you always what I have lived through. Uh, not all the gory details, but a, a lot of the negativity that I, that has touched my life. And when I thought about trying to find peace at first, it was years and years and years ago when I was divorced, when I, I got divorced. And people would come up to me and say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that you're divorced. And I used to say then, well, you know, please don't feel sorry for me. I think this is the best thing for both of us. So don't feel bad for me because I don't feel bad. And I thought to myself, hmm, I look at divorce differently than other people look at divorce. Some people see it as a terrible thing. I see it as doing good for each person so that they can be happy and uh, not miserable in the same place for the rest of their lives. But guess what? I got another shot in the arm, so to speak, when I got breast cancer. And that'll knock your block off if you're not expecting that. And I wasn't, as you know, and you've all been so kind to me through it. When when that happened to me, I was beside myself. I, I was beside, I, I, my whole world was thrown upside down. It was a shock. And I'm sure some of you had other diagnoses, things that have happened that have shocked you. Well, now, it took me a long time to come to grips with it. And I'm thinking too, at the time, I wasn't thinking about how do I find my peace until I could get those emotions under control, be objective, look at the situation, think about what I already know, what I already believe spiritually has to come back to me. You know, we're human. We're going to forget that stuff. And then we have to be reminded. That's what people like me standing up here are trying to do, is just remind you of what you already know. And then I need to remind you myself. Every day, I need a reminder. So I thought to myself, wow, I have to look at this thing from a different perspective. And when I did, and when I went through all of my machinations, which I will tell you about, which are the how-tos, I got it together. I got it together. And it didn't take that long. Grief, on the other hand, has touched my life in a big way. And I'm sure it has touched everyone's life in some way or other. I lost quite a few people in the space of a couple of years, including both of my parents. And it was a tough thing, as it is for everyone. And it's the same kind of process. How am I going to look at that loss? How do we look at it? How do we find peace in loss? How do we find peace in trauma? 
how do we find peace? Well, guess what? The good news is we can find peace in all of it. And I'm going to tell you how. <laughs> I have the formula, and so do you. It feels sometimes when things occur in our lives that we're never going to find peace. You know, sometimes you think that no matter what I do, I can't feel calm with this. I can't feel at peace with this. I can't get this under control. That is a totally human reaction. When events or situations upset us, when they're difficult, they instill fear. That's the word, fear. Now, some of you I know, um, know the author Gary Zukav. He wrote a book called The Seat of the Soul, and it changed my life. And in his book, he says that the opposite of love is fear. So when you are in the state of fear, you are not in the state of divine love. You are in a state of negativity, opposite divine love. And what you want to do is get back there. It's the absence of divine love. Fear is the absence of divine love. So here we have these things connected. We're connecting. We can't get our peace because we're in fear, because our brains can't process fear and peace at the same time. Because they are just plain and simple opposites. What we're looking for is the peace of God, and we are going to find it. We can find mental, spiritual, and physical peace. We can find it. We can have it. When the situation is extremely difficult, you can find your peace with it, the peace of God. When you think about it, and I think about it this way too, when, when I'm in prayer and there's a difficult situation, sometimes I don't say, dear God, thank you for relieving me of this terrible thing that has happened to me or to someone I love, et cetera. Instead, I say, dear Lord, you me peace in my heart. Help me to find peace because I can help other people when I'm at peace. You know, on the airplane, you put your mask on first if the uh, pressure drops and then you help somebody else. If you can get peace in your heart, you can help others. You can help yourself. There is hope. Here's the key. Here's the key. The key is accepting life as it is, as it comes. When we give up resistance, now resistance is a very uh, most often used spiritual word when we talk about being in opposition to what we want to manifest in our lives. When you can't manifest, there is something within you that is resisting what it is you want. So if you don't have peace of mind, there is resistance somewhere within your mind, your heart, your thoughts, even if you're not conscious. And if there is resistance, I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's probably fear. If you go back and really look at it. But we have the idea and the power and the might to choose peace, to decide to be at peace. You know, sometimes people say that's what love is about. You decide to love someone. You feel an attraction to this person, a friend or, or a romantic partner, whatever it is, but you ultimately decide to give them love, to love them and give it and take it from them. That's what we're doing with peace. We have to decide to have peace in our lives. We have to choose it. Choose it. That's the thing. We have to accept it. What happened? Okay. This awful thing happened in my life. This disappointing thing happened. This traumatic thing happened. This death happened in my life. How am I going to face this? What am I going to choose? Instead of heartbreak, instead of fear, what am I going to choose? Choose peace. 
before you choose anything else because God is peace. When you choose peace, you choose God. And you can. And you can resolve to stop the resistance by making that decision, that choice. And it's not that hard. And you know, I always tell you how we're going to do this. So I'm good. And I have some practical tips here for you that I use. This is what I use to get back to my peaceful place, to find the place within me that is the God within, to be at peace no matter what hits me. Now, here's the thing. You're a human being, so you have to recognize that there is a human response to these things that happen in the world. So I'm not telling you deny, 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 because then that will put you in the place of how someone will say, oh, you know, oh, he's in denial, she's in denial. Have you heard that one before? I love that. I love that. Oh, denial. Denial. Well, here's the thing. We're not denying because we're human. We have to respond in a human emotional way. You have to recognize your response. So when I get disappointing news, I recognize my response. I cry a lot. I cry a lot. I try to wrap my head around what in the world is happening to me right now. What's going on? If you can be objective, step back a minute, take a look at it and say, what's going on in my life? What is it that is upsetting me about this? What is scaring me? What is scaring me? What is inciting fear within me about this situation? You got to look at it. And then you got to ask yourself a few questions. Is staying in that place in your mind worth it? Is it worth giving up? your joy, your power, your energy to stay there? Huh, I don't think so. You can say to yourself, I will not be unduly upset about this thing. It will not get my power. You know, you can stand up to it. You can stand up to it. I know there are all those you know, Elizabeth Cooper lost stages uh, when we're grieving, not just the loss of people, but grieving different loss in our life. I'm telling you, you just got to tell yourself, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not letting that get me. I told you about my boyfriend from Texas when I faced a problem and he said to me, honey, Still got a problem. That's a personal problem, not yours. It's not your problem. You can choose to recognize it, then you say, I'm not hanging on to this thing any longer than I have to. Any longer than I have to. So I have to recognize it. I have to feel those emotions. I have to feel bad. And then I got to get up off the floor and say, okay, I'm not going to stay there indefinitely. Then I often ask myself, what is the worst thing that has ever happened to me? You ever ask yourself that? Hmm? What's the worst thing that has ever happened to you? I think about that. And then I compare what is happening to me in the moment, in that awful situation, with the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I say to myself, hmm. Does this take over as the worst thing that happened to me? And that thing takes number two. Sometimes. Sometimes it does. Other times, I look back at it and I say, oh man, I got through that. I got through that. I can get through this. Don't forget where that strength was. Don't forget that spiritual bank you put deposits in with your strength and moving forward. That's what you did. Now you need to make a withdrawal. And you have to say, all right, give me the strength to do this. I can get through it because I got through that. You ask yourself these questions. You'll find your strength. You look at the situation and remember always that nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent except death and taxes. <laughs> well, we can't get away from the first. 
and we might evade the second, but sooner or later it's going to be a chance. But nothing else is permanent. Nothing. You don't have to live with it for the rest of your life from the negative perspective. There may be something that changes your life. Yeah, you live with that. But you don't have to live with the negativity of it, with the sadness of it, with the trauma of it, with the fear of it. So you got to look at that situation and know that darkness passes, and it passes into the light. There's only one way for it to go. It goes to the light. It will pass. It will pass. I used to have a teacher when I was in grade school who used to say, time will pass when you pass your tests. Everybody's doing terrible. Uh-oh. <laughs> this will pass. This too will pass. We know it. We know it. I can tell you how we're going to get through this, and it's rather quick, but I'm not telling you yet. I'm saving it for the end. Keep your attention, right? A cliffhanger. So, another thing we need to do is lean on other people. Other people, other people will help you. Lean on people that you trust. People that you know will give you good and loving advice. And if you hear something that doesn't resonate with you, do not do it. Do not follow it. If you're hearing something that makes sense, go for it. But only go to people that you trust, that have your best interest in mind. God is working through them, of course. We know this. God's working through everybody that helps you. Everybody that helps you. God is working through. And you are an instrument yourself. So lean on other people. Make a conscious effort to choose peace right in the moment of trauma, which I did not do when I got that breast cancer diagnosis. I didn't sit there and uh, choose peace. I didn't sit with it a while. <clears throat> but if you can compose yourself long enough to choose peace in the moment, you will be astounded at the difference it makes in your life. Imagine that we are speeding up our spiritual energy. We're increasing it in the universe every time we choose peace because we choose God and we choose peace. So if we keep for every situation that comes up that's upsetting, instead of giving into it, we choose peace, we choose peace, we choose peace. We are building, 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 building that strength, that spiritual strength, and becomes a critical mass. Imagine world peace. Nice, huh? And a world that is not at peace. What's the critical mass there. It is not peace. It is not love. What we want to do is choose peace, not only for ourselves, but we metaphysicians believe that when we choose it for me, I choose it for you. Everything I choose for me, I choose for you because the energy is shared by all of us. If we all keep choosing peace, sooner or later, we will have it. We will have it. You have to get now into a physically peaceful state. By that I mean, if you're having trouble choosing peace, you need to go somewhere where you feel physically at peace in contact, in connection with God, whether that's in nature or with friends or with family or being alone in your home with a candle and some lovely meditation, whatever, wherever you get to go, where you feel at peace. When I was living in New York, I was um, uh, close by a beautiful mansion, a Vanderbilt mansion. They had beautiful grounds. And I used to go there all the time just to sit under a tree. I had my tree. 
my favorite tree. Whenever I needed to deal with something, I'd go there, find my tree, sit down, and talk to the tree. If you need to talk to the trees, go talk to the trees. Don't make me the only crazy one. <laughs> do whatever it is you have to do physically to help you to make that choice. Mentally, you have to step outside of yourself and take a look, as I was saying before. Take a look at you. How do you react to things? As if you were a clone of yourself stepping outside of you. You know, you remember Joan Rivers? She used to say that she had so many facelifts that the doctors pulled the skin up, cut it off, and made another Joan this big. <laughs> <laughs> Clone yourself. Clone yourself. Step out. Take a look and say, what am I doing? What? 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 Is that me? Is that you? You got to take a good mental look and be objective and say, do I normally react like this? How can I get back to who I really am? Which is, of course, the child of God at peace, normal. Whatever you have to do mentally to slow down those thoughts, whatever you have to do, you need to do it when negative thoughts come. And I've told you my little trick is to say, next, next. Next, give me another thought. Let's get rid of this negative one. Bring in another one next. Or say, no, 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 no. You know, actors, we have to say the same word a hundred different times sometimes. No, say that No, no, say it again. No, say it again. <laughs> you have to say no. Any way you can get that message across. Next, no, I'm not going there with that negative thought. No matter what. I'm not going there. Choose this situation to be a gift to you, to move you forward in your life and to move other people forward in their lives. See it as a gift toward a joyful life. Spiritually, start with breathing, meditating, praying, and affirming. So you want to attack this thing from a physical, a mental, and a spiritual place. You're going to get in a place that makes you feel physically comfortable. You are going to take a good look and, a, and awareness about what this situation really is, and then you are going to seek and give thanks in your prayers, your meditations, and your affirmations. If you make a choice to do these things, which I have done, then you truly become, as St. Francis has said, an instrument of God's peace. Because then you can help other people do the same thing. I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to share this because it was so important to my life. And I'm hoping that it's important to yours you know, Wayne Dyer gives us an affirmation, and I'm going to read it to you. His affirmation is, I can choose peace rather than this. I can choose peace rather than this. Well, I have my own little twist on this because I have found my little twist works. And it works instantly. So, I'm going to try it out on you today, if you are willing. The affirmation that I choose to say is, I choose peace now. So, if I ask everybody to just close your eyes for a moment, just a moment. Now, you are going to feel this affirmation the effect of it, you will feel in the solar plexus, right in that stomach area, and you're going to feel this. And remember what I'm going to say is this affirmation, and you accept it and say it to yourself silently. Here we go. I choose peace now. I choose peace. Now, I 
choose peace now. And slowly recognize that feeling of peace in the same places. So gently open your eyes. Did you feel it works every time? Every time. When you are able to use that phrase to pull yourself together, it has been a lifesaver for me. A lifesaver. It's instant relief for me. It's like taking a pill. Instant relief. Puts me in a wonderful place no matter what the situation is. And you should use this whenever you're angry and you're finding it hard to control. Whenever you are in pain physically. Whenever you are in pain emotionally. Whenever you are suffering a trauma, a disappointment. When you're under stress. When anything negative is touching your life. You stop when you can. Hopefully not while you're driving the car. And you say, I choose peace now. That one word makes all the difference. You're not saying whenever. You're saying now. I choose it now. And that's an instrument if I've ever heard one. So, when you use this affirmation, you can always tack on, and so it is. So you can say, I choose these now, and so it is. Yeah. That means it's a done deal. Use it. It is your king. It is your power. It is the way what a happier and more joyful life. And all I am saying is give peace a chance. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Yeah, wasn't that wonderful? Yeah. She is. Uh, yeah. She just she just finished testifying. If you didn't hear how personal it was, then did you miss the boat? She was testifying as to how she personally conquered the opposite of peace. She conquered it. And she gave you a mantra, and it says, I choose peace now. And people who study meditation know mantras help you get into that peaceful state of mind. So she trained herself to be an instrument of peace. And she told you exactly how she trained herself. You know, till now, she has so much control over it that she can say, peace get thee behind me, and that's where I'm going. <laughs> Hang on. Let's give her another hand. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Adrian. We're so happy that you spend time with us. <laughs> now it is time for us to uh, take up our offering for the morning. Uh, and we're going to read of our, we're still we going to recite our prosperity blessing together. Join me. Joyously, I give this gift, knowing the divine presence, the blessings, and the love of God, all that I need, all that I have, all that I give, 
and all the unseen see, thank you, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, wherever we are, God is, and all.